hey guys welcome back to my channel for this video i'll be continuing the series of multiple choice question as i aim to help students in passing their cxc this july 2020 and beyond all right so a plane travels from airport p to airport q 1500 kilometers away on a bearing of 120 degrees what distance south of p of airport p is airport q so right here guys they're asking us to apply trigonometry to bearings all right and so we need to know the south distance and so we are we are supposed to be drawing a triangle to depict the south movement all right so we know this this angle here is 120 this distance here is 1500 so we can draw our triangle right here okay so we can draw our triangle right here so we also know the angle on a straight line is equal to 180 degrees so if this angle from the north to q is 120 this angle below here is 60 degrees all right guys so let's continue so this horizontal line here would represent the east and you know east represents 90 degrees right and so if here's 90 degrees at this this point here will be 30 because everything here is 120 all right so 90 plus will give you 130 give you 120 so we need to find the south movement and this would represent the south downwards would represent south and that would be the east so the south guys we're going to be using this triangle right here i'm going to try to put it in all blocks so you can see it this triangle right here we're going to be focusing on so it's a right angle triangle so we know that um pythagoras theorem can be applied and the trig ratios can be used all right so this 30 degrees the observed angle so the opposite side will be the south. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to label the sides. This is my hypotenuse. H, Y, P. That's my hypotenuse. And this side here would be the adjacent. Okay. So since they want, they want the south distance, or the distance south of P is Q, they need this angle here. So we don't need adjacent. So of the three ratios we know, I'm going to put them right here. So Katoa. We don't need we don't need the tan, all right. We don't need the tan because it's opposite and the adjacent. We don't need tan, okay. So we only we would need tan is if we knew the adjacent. And so far we don't know the adjacent, so we don't we're not going to be using tan for this one. All right, let's go for cos. We won't be using cos either because we don't need we don't need the east. We need the south. So we're gonna move on to using the sine ratio so the sine ratio states so the sine of the angle then the angle is 30 is equal to the opposite side which is the south i'm going to use s for south so it's south over the hypotenuse which is 1500 you may be wondering why didn't i use tan or cos guys because the reason i didn't use those two is because we were given a length and we establish an angle right here. So we need to use a ratio that would include this length in it. All right. And so based on our answers, we can see that the 1500 is needed in it. So we couldn't use that. We could also draw the triangle guys below the line as well. But this would represent this. This would need a cost of 60. And so far we have no cost 60 in the answer here. And so we know the triangle below here wouldn't be necessary either. All right. So there are different ways you can do this. But let's do it the sine ratio way. So sine of 30 is equal to the south over the 1,500. To find south, we're going to be have to multiply both sides by 1,500 just to cancel the denominator. To cancel that. So south is equal to sine 30 times 1,500. So 1,500 times sine 30 is our solution. All right, and let's get right into the next question. 
if you need me to give other questions similar to this one guys you can let me know in the comment section below and i'll be happy to help you so which of the following represents the equation of a straight line we know this is in the form y equal mx plus b mx plus c all right and so m is the slope b is the y-intercept or you want to put c here it doesn't matter because they're all real numbers they can change any variables can be used and so so far this will be out of it because that's a quadratic this will be out as well a quadratic this is a multiplication of these two so that's non-linear and so the linear would be y equal x plus 5y let's move on to the next question this is a foreign exchange question so the exchange rate for one us dollar is six dollar thirty cent tt this means Trinidad and tobago the value of us ten dollar in tt currency is so let's say one us dollar is equal to six dollars thirty cents Trinidad and tobago so we know the value of ten us dollar you can either choose to multiply this by 10, I add it 10 times. But what I normally tell my students to do, guys, is to line up currency under currency. So you, have, you, have, well, you need to know the equivalent of 10 US to TT. So that's going to be your unknown value here. That's X. You do here, you go ahead, you cross multiply. So 10 times $6.30 will be... We know we're going to be moving one, um, one digit... To the right, so you're gonna be moving one digit because one movement is a movement of ten. So the solution is sixty-three dollars, and that's B. I hope you understand this question. If you don't, leave a comment section below, and I'll try to source more questions like those for you. So the length of time between twenty-one thirty-five hours and twenty-one hours thirty-five minutes and two hours forty-five minutes the following day is. All right, so for this question, guys, 21.35 hours is basically the 24 hour clock representing the evening hours for that day. So 21, we know, would represent um, 9 because 14, um, so from 13, so 13 is 1, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, so that's 9. So it's basically 9.35 in the night. So we know to end that day, we know 24 hours in a day and we have up to 9.35 so 21.35 when you subtract this guys it will give you the amount of hours remaining in in this day so we need to borrow um, an hour from this size so it's 23 hours over here being will be 60 minutes all right so it's 60 subtract 35 will give us 25 all right five one five two twenty three subtract twenty one is two so in this particular day we have two hours and twenty five minutes remaining in that day right guys and so a new day began so zero two four five is also twenty four hour clock representing two a two forty five a.m in the morning so to know the amount of time spent you're gonna be adding the two twenty five from the day before and the 245 in the current day when you add these two you should get the solution so 45 minutes plus 25 minutes will be 70 minutes in all but we know that 60 minutes um, is equivalent to one hour so we can't have 70 here because it can't pass 60 so we're gonna um, subtract that to find the remainder which is gonna be 10 minutes we're gonna bring the 60 minutes over on this side it's going to be one hour, so it's two, four, and one, five. So it's five hours and ten minutes for this. And so our solution is five hours, ten minutes, and it's right here. I'm going to try to source some more questions because Janelle asked me for these, and I'm going to try my best to find some more. Let's go move on to this question. So if K is equal to one over two, this is a half, how many is that? <laughs> it's a half mv square, then v equals. So here we're basically transposing, or some would say finding the subject of the formula. I don't know how you know it, but it can be said different ways. So let's move on right into it. So to, in order to transpose, guys, you need to find the, the do the opposite operations for all of them until you reach the, the desired letter you want to find, which is v. So half mv squared basically means 
mv squared over 2 is equal to k. All right? So we're going to be multiplying by 2 on both sides because it's dividing by 2 right here. So 2k is equal to mv squared. We need to find the value of v, but it's multiplying by m. So to divide by m on both sides, as I said, carry out the opposite operation on both sides, ensuring that you balance the equation, meaning if you divide by m here, you divide by m here to balance it. So that cancels. So v squared is equal to 2k over m. You need to find the value of v. To find the value of v, you find the square root of both sides to cancel the square. So that cancels the square root. So v is equal to the square root of 2k over m. Let's see. So it's right here. So our solution is right there. Let's try this question. 2 to the negative 5 is equal to what? So we know that this is basically applying indices. And indices, there's a rule that says anything that goes to the negative power is equal to 1 over that of the positive power. All right? So this is the rule that we're going to apply. So this is the base, this is the power. So it's going to be 1 over 2 to the 5. This can be reduced. The power tells you the amount of time you multiply the base. So it is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, 5 times. So 2 2 is 4, 4 2 is 8, 8 2 is 16. 16 times 2 is 32. So it's 1 over 32 to be our solution. All right, guys, I hope you understand this question that I explained. If you don't, leave me a comment in the comment section below, and I'll be happy to help you. Remember to like, share, subscribe, tell a friend about me, let them come and learn something, because we must pass this exam that's coming up, and I'll see you on the next one.